inflammation. So any inflammation in the pericardium is called pericarditis. Now we begin. Pericardium normally contains less than 5 ml of fluid. What is the purpose of this fluid? The purpose of this pericardial fluid is to pro uh, provide uh, protection from constant rubbing uh, of the heart to the pericardium. So normal is five, less than 50 ml of the clear straw colored fluid. Uh, now the fluid can be changed in various conditions. It can turn, uh, it can, uh, turn into bloody consistency and pussy or serous fluid. We are going to cover each one in detail. Pericardial effusion is the fluid accumulation in the pericardial cavity above normal limits. Now, this accumulation of fluid can be fast or slow. With slow accumulation of fluid in the pericardium, we have got uh, uh, some, some sort of benefit that it does not uh, compromise the heart function suddenly, and uh, heart functions are not that much compromised in, because heart has got uh, time to adapt. With rapid, uh, rapid accumulation, for example, in case of myocardial infarction, if the heart muscle fibers is necrosed, the blood can enter into the pericardial cavity, and this can lead to more devastating, uh, devastating and fatal consequence as compared to the uh, slow accumulation of fluid within the pericardium. How does it look like? It looks like globular enlargement of the heart on X-ray. Now, there are various types of etiological uh, classifications and uh, now the classifications can be uh, one of the aspect is primary and secondary. Primary means that uh, the uh, uh, the etiology, main etiology lies within the pericardium. For example, viral pericarditis, mostly it is a, uh, this infection is originating in the pericardium rather than any other structures, for example, lung or uh, heart. In, uh, and another classification can be acute and chronic. Acute and chronic, as you know, designates the uh, duration, depending on the duration. And the third is uh, depending on the cause. Um, and depending on the cross morphology like uh, serous, purulent and uh, KCS, which we are going to discuss uh, in detail. So these are three different mechanisms which can be, in which we can put pericarditis when describing them clinically. These are the pericard, first we are going to cover the acute peri uh, pericarditis and then later on chronic pericarditis. In serous pericarditis, Serous fluid accumulates. Now each pericarditis have got a multiple uh, can have a multiple causes. Uh, some of the causes are shared, but important thing to it is uh, for you to remember that what is the most common cause. You need to remember uh, memorize in such way. For example, in serous pericarditis is produced by non-infectious inflammatory disease. What are these inflammatory diseases? Mostly these are autoimmune diseases like rheumatic fever, SLE, systemic, systemic lupus, erythematosis, uremia, scleroderma. But there can be other causes as well. But this, this provides uh, the most common cause. Other causes can include tumors even. But this is the one of the less common cause. Mechanisms uh, of development of uh, serous pericarditis lies in different etiologies. Bacterial plur uh, pluritis may incite insufficient irradiation of the pleural pericardium serosa to produce sterile pericarditis. By the way, serous pericarditis is also called a sterile pericarditis because mostly it is devoid of any bacteria. Viral infection in originating in the upper respiratory tract, pneumonia, parotitis may uh, initiate the pericarditis and may serve as a primary focus of infection. In young adults, it occurs as apparent primary infection accompanied by myocarditis as a part of uh, myocarditis. 
tumors can uh, elicit uh, mar uh, pericarditis by which mechanism first is uh, lymph lymphatic blockage uh, uh, around the area of pericardium or by the direct extension into the pericardium and thereby restricting the pericardial uh, uh, fluid uh, uh, movement. Now, there is a one combination uh, which is noted acute fibrinous and serofibrinous pericarditis. Most of their etiologies are similar. Fibrinous and serofibrinous are also the most frequent type of pericarditis. And these are mostly sterile pericarditis, that is, without any infective causes. A most, a list provides the most common cause acute myocardial infarction, post infarction, Dressler syndrome, which is also seen after uh, myocardial infarction, uremia, chest radiation rheumatic fever, SLE, and trauma. So uh, as you can see, this in, is uh, sort of autoimmune and uh, um, other causes. Trebinous pericarditis, how does this look like? Cirrus pericarditis looks uh, uh, like, uh, uh, cirrus and fibrinous looks like uh, uh, thin uh, yellowish, uh, or straw colored fluid, but fibrinous is uh, somewhat different when surface is dry with fine granular roughening. Another difference lies in histopathology. Serous per uh, pericarditis inflammation is uh, less intense, while fibrinous pericarditis more uh, intense inflammation, causing large amount of yellow to brown turbid fluid containing leukocytes, erythrocytes, and fibrin. Fibrin uh, accumulation can result in two consequences. Either it can resolve, which is the mostly it resolves in cases of fibrinous pericarditis, or it can become organized as well. Here is a gross picture of the pericardium. Shows a shaggy fibrinous exudate. This appearance is called uh, bread and butter pericarditis. You don't confuse this area because it, uh, this area is a fat, normal uh, pericardial fat. Here you can see. What are the symptoms of fibrinous pericarditis? Patient will complain of sharp, intensely sharp pleural pain, which is position dependent. Patient will be febrile and pericardial friction rub you, you can hear on auscultation. These are the most important causes, uh, sorry, most important sign and symptoms, characteristic sign and symptoms. Now coming to third type of pericarditis is purulent or suppurative. Usually, uh, as the name indicates, suppurative, you remember the suppurative uh, infections are caused by bacteria. My, uh, there, uh, usually there's active infection by microbial invasion of the pericardial space. And this in, uh, in, uh, invasion of the pericardial space can be uh, through uh, various routes. Either it can be uh, inflammation around the vicinity organs like lung, and it secondarily involves the pericardium. It's, for example, in cases of pneumonia, seeding uh, of the blood, for example, in cases of blood sepsis, lymphatic extension from the uh, lymphadenitis uh, infected by uh, bacteria or it can be directly inoculated. Uh, most commonly it is inoculated uh, during the cardi uh, uh, cardiac procedure. Sorry, this is spelling is wrong. Cardiac procedure, cardiotomy, in which it can directly in inoculate. Here is an example, cross picture showing a heart covered by pussy uh, material. Now, here you have seen the pus. It can be copious amount, 400 to 500 ml in volume. Histopathology, as expected, more intense inflammation than serofibrinous neutrophil, which can form a pus. And inflammation can extend into adjacent structure and can result into mediastinum involvement. That's called mediastinopericarditis, when both pericardium and mediastinum is involved. 
Rodent pericarditis consequence either a complete resolution, which is infrequent, but most frequently, prudent pericarditis, it leads to organization of pus, abscess, and leads to scarring. And this is uh, because of this scarring, which uh, provides adhesion, fibrous adhesion, and leads to uh, constrictive pericarditis. Now we are uh, entering the fourth category, which is hemorrhagic pericarditis. Hemorrhagic pericarditis is also given uh, this name because it's uh, when you see the fluid from the patient, uh, it is got a bloody consistency. It can either be mixed with fibrin or uh, it can be composed of some kind of separative effusion. Most common causes, uh, most common causes spread to uh, uh, spread uh, of malignant tumors to the pericardial space. In this case is cytology, cytology which is the fluid examination from the uh, of the pericardium uh, will show malignant cells uh, if sampled and grossly it will be bloody consistent. So the hemorrhagic pericarditis most common causes some malignancies or metastatic involvement of the pericardium. Other causes are also uh, there, which are less common, can be bacterial. It can be because of bleeding diathesis like uh, sickle cell, thalassemia, antiphospholipid uh, syndromes. Now, another cause can be tuberculosis uh, and of also falling cardiac surgeries. Here is a picture of uh, hemorrhagic pericarditis. You can see that all of it is uh, hemorrhagic. Arithmetus. Now coming to la, uh, our uh, last category of acute pericarditis is acacious pericarditis. As the name indicates, it will show granulomatous inflammation. Most common cause will be tuberculosis. Rare causes include fung fungal infection. Common mechanism is by direct extension from the lung, which are more commonly involved, crossly yellow thick. Uh, uh, exudate and uh, consequence mostly this result uh, uh, mostly this results in um, uh, scarring and fibrocalcific plaque formation and when organized can lead to chronic constrictive pericarditis here we end acute pericarditis and we have discussed various uh, forms now coming to chronic or heel pericarditis in some cases, organization uh, may produce plaque like fibrous thickening of the serosal membrane. This is called soldier's plaque. It's just basically a fibrous thickening of the serosal membrane, which is, uh, which is a plaque like in cross appearance. Fibrin in the adhesion can form, uh, can either resolve or form a meshwork like uh, adhesions. This can result in adhesive pericarditis, but this adhesive pericarditis do not affect the cardiac function. As a comparison to this, another form of chronic pericarditis is adhesive media pericarditis. In this, there is adhesion, media stinum plus pericardial involvement is there. Mostly follow infections, previous cardiac surgery or mediastinal irritation. Irradiation that is radiation following um, Hodgkin's or other uh, breast surgeries. Pericardial sac is obliterated and adheres, uh, adherence of the external aspect of the parietal layer of the pleura um, of the pericardium to the surrounding structures there. This will restrict cardiac movement and cardiac function is compromised because it cannot co or contract or uh, um, it cannot uh, perform its diastolic and systolic movement. Clinically, this will present like systo uh, systolic retraction of the rib cage and diaphragm and pulses paradoxes. There will uh, this will put uh, as heart has to pump against this the uh, thick adhesions around the pericardium. This will resu result in increased workload on the heart, which initially results in cardiac hypertrophy because it has to work more and eventually can progress to congestive cardiac failures.
the third terminology used in constrictive uh, is a constrictive pericarditis. In this, heart is encased in dense fibrous or fibrocalcific scar. And this scar will limit diastolic expansion and, and decrease cardiac output. It clinically mimics restrictive cardiomyopathy. In this, there will be fibrous scar, can obliterate pericardial space, and sometimes calcify in extreme cases. It can calcify so much that it can resemble like a plaster mold, which we put on a uh, on the site of fractures and call, uh, and then they are, uh, then you can call it concrete cordis. Because of dense scar, cardiac hypertrophy and dilatation uh, cannot occur. This is a, a consequence, and cardiac output may be reduced at rest. So, heart cannot pump when there's increased demand on the uh, uh, demand of uh, blood pumping by the body and uh, sign and symptoms when auscultation there will be muffled heart sounds JVP will be elevated jugular venous pressure peripheral edema now the treatment is to release this addition by thoracotomy and excise uh, or by excision of the uh, fibrinous pericardium here we end the chapter of pericard uh, oh, sorry uh, pericarditis uh, and now we are coming to tumors of the heart these are myxoma the common tumors are myxoma lipoma papillary fibroelastoma rhabdomyoma and metastatic tumors are uh, not common tumors i've just uh, briefly mentioned uh, the name here but there are certain organs of the body which have uh, got uh, mm, in which metastasis of uh, metastasis is less common and heart is one such organ in which metastatic tumors are least common other site is uh, skeletal muscle myxoma starting with myxoma is the most common primary tumor of the heart its origin in, lies in multipotent mesenchymal cell it's a benign tumor left atrium is the most common site prostate polycytic protrusion Hypocellular stroma shows the stellate neoplastic cells with scant cytoplasm, spindle-shaped nuclei. It can produce like a, a bulbic mechanism because it's polypoidal and it is protruding into the cardiac lumen. And it can prevent cardiac opening and closing. Now the uh, myxomas can be sporadic uh, or it can be arise with the, arising within the Familiar syndromes, example is McCuny Albert syndrome, Carney's complex. Now, comparing right to left atria, the ratio is 4 to 1 for atria. That is four times it's more common as compared to right atria. Its consequence can be valve obstruction. It can dislodge, embolize to periphery. It can produce constitutional syndromes like fever, malaise, due to release of cytokine interleukin 6 by the cardiac myxoma. You can diagnose this by ECG and uh, treatment is uh, surgical excision. Here is a picture. Here you can see hypocellular stoma, pale eosinophilic mat uh, material, and these are the tumor cells, bland stellate shaped cells, and these are uh, hemocytal legend macrophages. These can uh, be seen in this uh, myxoma because of friction hemorrhage within the uh, this uh, tumor and these macrophage imbibe uh, the RBCs. Another tumor common uh, is uh, lipoma. Common location is left ventricle, right ventrium, uh, right atrium, or atrial septum. It's uh, in some cases non neoplastic deposition of fat uh, is called lipomatous hypertrophy, but this is not a tumor, just accumulation of fat. The third category is papillary fibroelastoma. It resembles like C anemone like uh, structure. May embolize. Usual location is the cardiac valve, especially ventricular surface of the semilunar valves and atrial surface of atrioventricular valves. Histopathology uh, shows surface endothelium covering core of connective tissue. The fourth one is rhabdomyoma. Rhabdo, as the name indicates, 
Its origin is in the uh, cardiac muscle. Myoma is the penine tumor originating from the muscle. Most common primary tumor of the pediatric age group. Usual age is first year of life. Half have got sporadic mutation and other, another half have got um, can be seen as a part of uh, tuber, uh, tuberous sclerosis complex, which can be uh, caused by mutation in tumor suppression gene TSE1 or TSE2. Rhabdomyoma often regresses spontaneously. That's why some, uh, some people considered it to be hematomatous lesion rather than neoplastic. Here is a gross, uh, gross picture, solid cut surface, and uh, looks like a, a tan brown from a tumor. And here you can see the microscopy. These are large cells, eccentric cytoplasm, as you see in uh, cardiac muscles. These are the nuclei which I am pointing. In between are the fat cells. Now, the last case, uh, category of tumor is the sarcoma in heart. Carcinomas are not common, but sarcoma is the, uh, more common as compared to, uh, to other parts of the body. Cardiac uh, sarcomas, in cardiac sarcomas, cardiac angiosarcoma is the more common. Um, and Cardiac sar angiosarcoma and other sarcoma resemble uh, other sar uh, sarcoma uh, histopathologically as seen in other parts of the body. So we cannot say that its uh, origin is from heart or from um, blood vessels or lung. So my histopathology is similar for uh, cardiac angiosarcoma and for uh, breast angiosarcoma. Here we end. Any questions? My lecture, thank you so much. Sure, question going in, madam. Hello, uh, madam. How are you? Hello, G. Hello, here we end the session. Thank you, uh, thank you, everyone. Okay, madam.